Today's lesson is review on graphing linear equations in the form of y equals mx plus b. So before we go about graphing lines, I just want to make sure we're good with each part of the, um, the equation y equals mx plus b. So the m is the slope. The b, remember, is the y-intercept. And it's important to understand what the x and the y are. So the x and the y, we, when we write our equation, we don't fill in for the x and the y. So we leave it x and y. Uh, we fill in for the m and the b. But the x and the y are all the possible coordinates, all possible coordinates. on the line. So are all the coordinates on the line. So let's start off by graphing. That's the, all, all the coordinates on the line. That is going to be important when we write the equations down the road, the next lesson, uh, when we want to find the slope and the y-intercept, and we're only giving a certain amount of the, uh, a certain amount of information. So let's graph the first one. So y equals negative 2x plus 3. We're going to graph this three different ways. So the first way is not using an xy table, just using that we know that the slope is, so the m is negative 2 or negative 2 over 1, and b is 3. So I'm going to first think of it as, I think of graphing, Linear equations as like, as like when you guys are on Google Maps and you first have to have a starting location. So it's where you're standing. So my starting location here is our y-intercept, which is at three. And then your directions are the slope. So you go down two because it's negative two to the right one, down two to the right one, and I just keep on plotting every single possible point. So I can be as accurate as possible. And also go start from the y or something. If you go up, you go left one. So you go up two, left one, up two, left one. And this would be our line. Make sure you draw the line should be going all the way through the graph. Arrows on the end because the line continues to go on forever and ever. And make sure you label the line y equals negative 2x plus 3. So that's the method of just using the y-intercept and the slope. Um, that's usually the first method taught for graphing linear equations. You'll see, I have seen that sometimes when students graph like that, they tend to forget about the negative slope and just always make it positive. Uh, so whenever you graph like that, just check your line. At the end is my y-intercept at positive 3. Yes, it is. Is my slope negative? Am I going down? Yes, it is. So and it's down instead of up. Uh, yes, the, the line is going down. So that that is correct. And then here's another way of graphing this. So you could use an xy table and find points. So... I'm going to fill in for x. I like to have an xy table, negative x values if I can. So I'll have negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So those are my x values. And I'm just going to plug them in to our equation to find their corresponding y values. So we have coordinates x, y. So I'm going to plug in negative 1. Negative 2 times negative 1 plus 3. That would be 2 plus 3, which is 5. And if you guys want to add another, and a lot of people like to do this, add another uh, column here and just have it be the points x, y if you want to. Go right ahead. You don't have to do this if you don't want to, obviously. Um, so this point would be negative 1, comma, 5. Negative 1, comma, 5 would be here. And just keep on plugging in. So this would be negative 2 times 0 plus 3. That would be 3. So my point would be 0, comma, 3. And just keep doing this 
with um, all the x values that are in the table. You don't need to choose negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. You can choose any x values you want as long as they're plottable on the x, y coordinate. So go ahead, finish that out, and graph the line. Pause the video. So the line should look like that. Make sure you have arrows at the end. Make sure the line goes all the way through the graph. Make sure you label it. <clears throat> and there's what the XY table should look like. Now, this is what you would want to do if you didn't have a calculator. I want to show you guys how to do this in your calculator. It makes it a lot easier. Um, after you've graphed a bunch of straight lines, you know how to graph them. So the calculator has, allows it to save some allows you to save some time. So um, on the calculator, we're gonna use a TI-84 for this, but any graphing calculator works. What you would want to do is go to y equals, and now we're gonna type in the equation we want to graph, which was negative two x plus three. Press graph. You'd see, oh, that looks exactly like the lines we've been drawing as it should it's the same exact same exact equation so if you want to check the table out and this is what your shown work is going to look like you want to press second table and then it gives us all the points so just we're just going to copy down at least the rule is at least three of the points so you want to copy down three of these points so i'm going to go off to the side right here I'm going to do a little XY chart. And let's just do negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. So I'm doing 5 points. So I'm copying straight from the table 7, 5, 3, 1, and negative 1. That's your shown work there. You've got to show that to show some work. And then once we graph it, Graph all those points. And draw the line. I'm going to just continue plotting it just to be as accurate as possible. Line goes all the way through. Arrows on the end. And make sure you label it. So that's the nice, easy way of using the calculator. I, I like using the calculator because uh, you're less prone to make a mistake when you're graphing it. So I would always, at least always check with the calculator, make sure your line looks like the graph when you graph in the calculator. I want you guys to do these two questions on the right pause the video and take one or two minutes and try those. There's a couple different ways of doing this first question. It says, is the point negative 24 comma 59 a solution to the equation? So our equation, y equals negative 2x plus 3, if it's a solution, then when I plug in negative 24 in for x and 59 in for y, we should get a equal number on the left and the right side. So I'm going to plug... 59 in for y, and negative 24 in for x. And I'm just going to continue to simplify this. So this would be 59 equals 48 plus 3. 59 equals 51. That is not true. 59 does not equal 51. So therefore, it is, a, it is negative 24 comma 59 a solution to the equation. No. If you got 59 equals 59, that would be a solution to the equation, um, but it is not. So is it a point on the line? No. If it's not a solution to the equation, it's not a point on the line. And I want to show you guys a couple different ways of doing this. You could just plug it into a table, like very similar to what we did up here. Um, you could graph it and just continue going till an x is negative 24 and see what the y value is. Or what you also could do is in the calculator, check the table out, 
we want we're worried about when the x is negative 24 so i'm going to scroll up to negative 24. And if you look at negative 24 our y value is 51 not 59 so that is not a solution to the equation and it's not a point on the line let's go to the next page now given a graph let's let's write the linear equation in y equals mx plus b given the graph so <clears throat> looking at the graph remember m is the slope b is the y-intercept I always look for the y-intercept first if we could see it, if it's a nice if it's a nice uh, integer number. Let's take a look at the y-intercept for this first one here. It crosses at 2, so I know b has to be equal to 2. So when I write my equation, I know it has to be y equals something x, we don't know what the slope is yet, plus what my value of my b is, which is positive, it'd be plus 2. And then to find the slope, how many points do I need to find slope? I need two points, so let's look for two nice points. I'm going to use this point right here, negative 4, 0, and let's use the y-intercept, <coughs> 0, 2. So we can go off to the side and we can do the uh, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1, but since we have a graph, we're going up from 0, 1, 2 to 2, so we're going up 2, and to the right, 1, 2, 3, Four and write 4. So my change in y over change of x is going to be 2 over 4, which is 1 over 2. So my slope is just 1 over 2. You could use the algebraic equation for slope also. You could use any two points on the line. You're always going to have a constant rate of change of 1 over 2. So I just want you guys to do, take a minute or two, pause the video, and do the next two. If I take a look at this next one, my y-intercept is negative 4. It's crossing at negative 4. And then let's look for another nice point on this line. Whew. I'm going to say right here. So I'm going to do it this way by doing the um, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So this point is 0, comma, negative 4. And right here is negative 2 comma negative 1 so I'm going to find the slope that would be negative 4 minus negative 1 over 0 minus negative 2 you would get negative 3 over 2 which would be our slope and that makes sense it should be negative because look at the line it's going down so my equation would be y equals my slope, which is negative 3 over 2, x, and my b is minus, is negative 4, so it would be minus 4. And let's do that last one. So my y-intercept on this last one, it crosses the origin, so b is just going to be equal to 0, so we don't need to write plus 0 at the end. We would just leave it whatever uh, the slope times x is. So let's look for my other point here. We have a point right here. Let's use this point. So we are going from the leftmost point. We're going up 5, 10. So we're going up 10. That's my change in y. And I'm going right 5. So my change in y over change of x is 10 over 5, which is 2. So my equation is just y equals 2x. And we don't write the plus 0. I know this, the, the uh, y-intercept is 0, but we don't write the plus 0 because we just simplify it to 2x. That's it. Uh, the classwork is all practice graphing, linear equations, and that's it.